Hello everyone and welcome to the last video of 2017. So I'm totally gonna be absolutely cliche and talk about everything that happened in 2017, my goals for 2018, all that kind of good stuff. Um, but I asked you guys if you wanted to speed paint or a real-time video. So you guys really wanted to see a real-time video, so that is what I decided to do. So this video is pretty long. It's not completely real-time, I will say. It's sped up about twice as fast as normal. So um, yeah, my my computer could not handle a real-time video and the video would have ended up being like over an hour long. So I figured this was a happy medium. It's still quite a long video, so I hope you guys enjoy it even though it's quite lengthy. Um, so pull up a sketchbook, pull up a snack, and uh, yeah, let's just draw and talk together. So uh, 2017 was quite a year. Um, I know the general consensus is that it was not a great year. Um, there are definitely some not great things that happened, um, but I think overall, for me personally at least, this was pretty, <laughs> this was a pretty life-changing year for me, you guys. Um, in the beginning of the year, beginning of 2017, um, I wanted to put more focus into my art and my YouTube channel, and that was kind of like the biggest goal that I had. Um, and I, it was going really well until uh, one day when my husband decided, or well, he was then my fiance, um, he decided to uh, say, you know, what if I joined the Coast Guard? And it kind of came out of left field for me. Um, I knew that he wanted to join the military in high school or he was considering it and talking to people about it. But um, at the time he was in college to become a social studies teacher. So that's kind of the route we were on. I was focusing on art. He was in college. Uh, he actually had enough credits to even start substituting. So he was far into college. What noise was that? That was a noise. Never mind that noise. Sorry. Um, but he was, yeah, planning on going to college or not planning, but he was in college planning to become a teacher. Um, and that's just kind of where our life was at. So him coming up to me one day and asking about the military just kind of threw me for a loop. Um, and we were kind of in limbo for a while because we weren't sure if that's something that we wanted to do. So we talked about it a lot. I read a lot of blogs. I made a lot of lists, a lot of pros and cons lists. Um, and ultimately, uh, he decided to join and I decided to support him through that, of course. Um, and that kind of started a whole chain of events that really changed my entire life. And I know that sounds really dramatic, but um, it's kind of true. Um, for starters, uh, he had to, you know, go through the recruitment process, which was pretty stressful. Because um, he had to get qualified, then he had to pass medical like qualifications and stuff like that. Um, but he passed through all that and... He went through it pretty smoothly, actually. It happened pretty fast. Um, and then uh, before we knew it, he had a date to be shipped off to boot camp. So, uh, yeah, that was crazy. Um, so that meant that we had to get married because uh, I sure as heck was not going to stay in Las Vegas while he got shipped out somewhere else for the military. So um, we were engaged at the time, so it's not like we rushed into marriage at all. We had planned on getting married even before this. Um, we were just waiting until he finished college, but uh, that wasn't quite an option anymore. So luckily, with the help of my amazing family, we were able to have an absolutely beautiful wedding. Um, it was honestly perfect and definitely one of the highlights of my entire life, definitely the highlight of my entire year. Um, it was just everything I wanted it to be and more. Um, I do have the wedding video, so if you guys would be interested in seeing the wedding video, uh, let me know. I was contemplating putting it on this channel, but I wasn't sure if it would fit or if anyone would be interested in it, so um, yeah, let me know. Um, I will put up some photos that we took from the wedding here um, because I really love the pictures and I'd love to share them with you guys. Um, but yeah, it was amazing. I was so just so happy. The venue was absolutely perfect. Um, my family really, really came together and helped me with all the decorations because we had like a month 
to plan a wedding. Um, so my whole family just really came together and helped me out. And I will just, I always remember not only the wedding and how perfect it was, but just how supportive everyone was and how just how much help I got from my whole family and my of course my husband was so supportive throughout the whole thing and kind of let me do whatever I wanted to do in terms of wedding planning but it was just absolutely perfect and I got to marry my best friend and now we're married and yeah it's just it was just perfect it was so great um but then two weeks after that came the rough part because um he had to get shipped off to boot camp um him being in boot camp was really, really hard for a few reasons. Um, of course, we were newlyweds and I didn't want him to leave right after we got married. Um, the second thing, uh, I was extremely sick and um, I've actually kind of been sick this whole year, which kind of puts a damper on this year. Um, those of you, I'm sure most of you know by now that I have cystic fibrosis um, and this year was extremely hard on my health. I have kind of been sick all year. Um, I went to the hospital three or four times this year. I can't exactly remember, um, but I went to the hospital a lot this year and uh, it's just been hard. I, I don't know what exactly it is about this year that just seemed, I just can't seem to really get better or catch a break. Um, but right after he left for boot camp, literally not even a week later, um, I was in the hospital again and I ended up needing a pick line. You guys have heard me talk about that. I won't go too much detail into what all that is because I've talked about it before. Um, but basically, I was just really, really sick and I needed a lot of medicine. And it was pretty hard to do that alone. Um, I've always either had my mom to help me or my husband to help me with being sick and just kind of like dealing with all that and my mom definitely did help me this time too like don't get me wrong she was amazing and she brought over food and made sure I was okay but it was just very different because I had to go back home alone and it was just kind of rough um, not only like physically on my health, it was rough because I kind of had to take care of myself. You know, I didn't have anyone there to make me food or make sure I got out of bed and did my medicine. So I really had to be self-sufficient, which I've always been pretty good at being self-sufficient, but it's much different when you're completely alone and you don't really have anyone to be like, hey, I'm tired. Can you go get me a water from the fridge or something like that? I Everything I had to do on my own. So that was... That was kind of rough. Um, and then emotionally, it was extremely hard because whenever I get really sick, uh, my depression kind of flares up. Um, I also deal with depression a lot, which I've talked about on this channel before. Um, but depression kind of comes stronger when I feel really, really sick, especially if I've been in the hospital. It kind of flares up with the rest of my disease. So that's like super fun. It's like a double whammy, which is just like awesome. Um, but anyway, uh, it was really hard to deal with that also while being alone. Um, and like I said, I had amazing friends. My family was amazing, but it's just a little different when you know, you're just kind of alone with your thoughts for most of the day. So that was really, really hard to deal with alone. And I've kind of been battling depression more so this year too, just because I've been so sick. Um, so it's been kind of hard to deal with all of that as well. Um, so the two months when uh, my husband was in boot camp was just really difficult. Um, but anyway, I got through it, of course. Uh, I'm just a big complainer really um so he came home passing boot camp it was amazing to see him again it was kind of funny because he looked and sounded so different like the first time he called me on the phone while he was still in boot camp I did not recognize his voice um and that's because they yell so much in boot camp like they're constantly yelling they do not have inside voices so he comes home and his head is shaved and his voice sounds so rough like he's been gargling with rocks so it was so weird to see him like that he kind of looked like he just escaped from prison or something and then it was so fun just him telling me like all the stories about boot camp it's not it doesn't sound fun by any means but he like talks about it in this way that's like almost nostalgic 
So I, I don't know. He didn't have fun there, but he talks about it like he did. Um, and the stories he told me from boot camp are just absolutely insane. Just like the things that they had to do and like the things that people got in trouble for and just absolutely insane. So it was so good to see him and hear him tell all those stories in person. And it was just like amazing just seeing him in the airport because we went and go and picked him up, of course, uh, me and his best friends. And uh, it was just so good to see him again after being away from him for so long and I know two months in retrospect is not that long but it's the longest we've been apart since we've been together so yeah that was a uh, that was a uh, rough um but he came home it was great uh we were home for about four five days I think which was just enough time to see everyone uh and then we had to move across the whole country we used to live in Las Vegas, and uh, my husband joined the Coast Guard, and there's no coast in Las Vegas, so we had to move somewhere with the coast. And uh, one of the reasons why we decided that he was going to join the military um, was for the travel. Uh, that was a huge selling point for us because we've always wanted to travel, and whenever we go on vacations, we like to travel somewhere new. So we thought this would be a really good opportunity for us to see a whole bunch of new places and really basically, you know, just kind of not have to pay a whole lot of money to see a lot of new places because we just move. Um, and another reason we decided to join the military was uh, because of the amazing benefits, because uh, cystic fibrosis is not a cheap disease, and without insurance, my medicine costs about $30,000 a month. And uh, you know how I said I went to the hospital three or four times this year? Um, it's about three hundred to $600,000 per hospital visit, so uh, the military was looking pretty good. Um, so yeah, we, what was I saying? Yeah, we moved. Sorry. I'm totally lost in my thoughts. It's, you know, it's New Year's, so I'm in that kind of nostalgic, kind of reflective mood anyway. So we packed up everything that we had and we moved across the whole country because uh, my husband got stationed in Boston, Massachusetts. So we moved from Las Vegas, Nevada to Boston, Massachusetts. And we road tripped the whole thing because uh, we have a little dog and I did not want to try to take the dog in an airplane. So we were just like, oh, we'll just, we'll drive. Plus we had a car. We don't, we, how do you even take a car across country if you don't drive it? So we <laughs> did a road trip, cross country road trip. It was quite an experience. Um, it was really fun, actually. Um, I was kind of worried that we'd kind of get sick of each other or be at each other's throats um, just because, you know, being with one person in a car is like, that's rough for anybody. Um, but it turned out to actually be really fun and a really enjoyable experience. Um, we were traveling, like I said, with our dog. I bought my dog a doggy car seat and it was one of the best things I decided to do. If you were ever traveling long distances in a car with a dog highly recommend a doggy car seat because it was just a lifesaver so we would drive about eight hours a day and then we'd find a hotel at whatever city we ended up in and we would just stay the night and then we'd get up and do it all over again and it was really fun it was enjoyable um we listened to uh lord of the rings on audio tape, which was great because I'd never actually read the books. By the way, fantastic. The uh, narrator was amazing, fantastic, and there's so much more that happens in the book. I know everyone says that, but honestly, the Lord of the Rings movies are already like three hours long, but they could easily be nine hours long per book, just saying. Anyway, moving on. So eventually we got to Boston. Boston is a beautiful city, by the way. Very cool. Very different from Las Vegas. We passed through some of the most beautiful, like, forests and fields and stuff. And Las Vegas is a huge desert, so it was really interesting to see just all that vegetation and stuff, um, especially because we moved in the fall. So I actually got to see, like, all of the fall colors and the seasons changing and, like, the orange and yellow leaves it was it was absolutely beautiful some of the most beautiful things i've ever seen on that road trip um 
So anyway, we eventually get into Boston. We stayed at a hotel for a while and then at an Airbnb for a while because we couldn't quite find a place to live. And eventually we found a place in Salem. Yes, like the Salem, Massachusetts, like the witch trials, Salem, Massachusetts. That is where we live right now. Um, and that's pretty much just what we've been doing. Um, I got sick again right after we moved, which has been a huge bummer because I haven't really gotten a chance to explore the new place that I live in. I've only been into Boston a few times um, and I haven't really seen all the cool things there is to do in Salem because I've just been so sick. But that being said, I think I'm finally on the mend. I found a new doctor here in Salem. Um, which was very important to me because I need a really good, you know, doctor system. I found a new CF specialist. Everything seems to really be on the up and up. Um, I've been on antibiotics for a little while now and I'm actually feeling pretty good and like I have energy again. Um, the only thing right now is that now it's so cold outside. Like I've never experienced cold like this before, guys. Like I said, I'm from the desert there's snow on the ground like like I can look outside my window and there is snow and that is bananas to me um so I guess now I'm just kind of dealing with acclimating to this crazy weather um but all in all 2017 was an absolutely wild year um art definitely took a back burner to everything else which I think is kind of understandable considering what's been going on um, I've been trying my best to keep up with YouTube and making content, but you know, sometimes it, it just, it just can't happen. Um, I think, uh, you know, everything else is kind of more important right now, at least everything that I've been doing, what with my husband joining the military, getting married, all my sickness and stuff. Um, but now life is just kind of chill. Like I'm in this new place, um, I don't really have much going on and uh, I can really throw myself into my work now, which I'm really excited about. Um, thankfully, because of the job my husband has now, I don't have to have a traditional job, which if I wasn't sick, I would be working a traditional job. But because I am so sick, um, that's something that's just not feasible for me. Um, so I'm eternally grateful to my husband for taking this sacrifice so that I can focus on my health. And because I'm focusing on my health, I can also put more effort into my art career as well. So I can still earn somewhat of a living even though I'm not working a traditional job. But like I said, life has calmed down now. Um, I'm in this new place. Uh, I can just kind of do my thing and I'm really excited for it. Um, I'm going into 2018 extremely hopeful um, and extremely determined to make it better than 2017. Like I said, I don't think 2017 was a bad year at all, um, but it was definitely rough. It was extremely hard in some cases um, and kind of just downright shitty in other cases. Um, but it was still a great year. And you know, that's that's just life. Life is full of good and bad really good things, really bad things, and you just kind of got to take it as it goes and just, I don't know, just live your life. Um, so 2018, we're going into 2018. I'm excited. I'm hopeful. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I do have goals for 2018. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think back on the goals that I made for myself in 2017. I don't think I actually stuck to any of them, except a few. I will, I will say I did quite a few. Um, one of the goals that I had for 2017 was to keep up with being vegetarian and that has been awesome because I am actually vegan now. So I'm very proud of myself for sticking that with that through a whole year. Um, I went vegetarian in December of 2016 so I haven't had meat at all in 2017 and that makes me feel really good about myself. Um, I've also been dwindling down the rest of my animal products and now I can say that I am vegan and I'm very 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 happy about it. Um, as far as art career goals, um, I definitely want to grow my channel more just like every year. I want to put a lot of focus on improving my art as a whole. 
um, especially these last couple months or so, I've been feeling very inadequate about my work and I really just want to get better. Um, like my technical skills, like I'm happy with the way my art is progressing and what I'm doing with it and the stories that I'm telling with it, but I really, really want to just get better at it. I want to be able to express what I want to express in a better way. So I want to improve my technical skills a lot. And by doing that, I plan to go back to the very, very, very beginning and kind of reteach myself the fundamentals of art um, because that's something that I feel I kind of, you know, when I was younger, I was kind of like, oh, I don't need to learn that. That's boring. That's just boring art stuff. Um, and I've realized that's really detrimental to me as an artist because there's a lot of things that I feel like I should know that I just haven't grasped yet. So I plan to go back and kind of just teach myself the fundamentals from the beginning as if I was a total noob at art. Um, so I'm going to be really kind of focusing on that and kind of going from there. Um, there's some things especially I want to work on, like value. I feel like my value is lacking extremely uh, and my form and shapes are just kind of, they're just not there. And then of course the usual things like anatomy, hands, bodies, you know, stuff like that that I'm just not confident in. Um, yeah, I also plan to sketch more a lot this year because um, I'm looking at my sketchbook for this year and I haven't even filled an entire sketchbook this year. I have not drawn that little, I think, ever. And like I said, I'm trying to be easy on myself because I know so much has happened this year. But at the same time, I'm kind of disappointed in myself, too, because I just really, I really slacked in the art department in some ways so i really want to sketch a lot more and keep more of an art journal i guess um i want like a sketchbook that i can just kind of like dump all of my thoughts in and i really suffer from trying to make my sketchbooks too pretty so yeah that's another goal is to keep a better sketchbook and actually you know keep up with it throughout the year <sighs> so yeah that is kind of kind of all really I mean yeah I really just kind of wanted to word vomit at you guys and I hope you guys are okay with it and with me rambling on and on and on about life and what happened to me this year and the next like my goals and stuff for next year um oh that's me taking a picture for Instagram haha <laughs> um anyway I will talk about the painting a little bit Oh, but first, I do want to ask, uh, what are your guys' goals for 2018, and how was your year? Like I said, I know a lot of people have been saying that 2017 was really rough, and um, I can totally understand that. Like, it's been rough for me, too. Like, aside of the personal things in my life, just, like, what's happening in the rest of the world really gets me down sometimes and like my hometown had a really horrible tragedy this year which is affecting a lot of my friends and family and kind of just like I don't know it just feels like sometimes the world is a dark place um, and I hate feeling like that because I really try my best to be optimistic um, but yeah sometimes it kind of seems really bleak but you know a lot of good things did happen this year too um, whenever there's dark, there is the light. Also, uh, I'm going to get really cheesy right here. And I think my recording cut out. So anyway, I was rambling about, I think, some stuff. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, what are your guys' goals for 2018? How was your year? Talk to me in the comments. Let me know what's going on. Um, and then yeah, I still have uh, about 15 minutes left in this video to ramble at you guys. So, um, I thought I would answer some questions that you guys have for me. So, um, I'm just going to get right into them, do a little mini Q&A. Um, I do plan on doing a bigger Q&A too, so if you guys have any questions for that, definitely leave them below. Um, but yeah, um, let's see. Uh, what is the thing that you struggle the most with art? Um, for me personally, I struggle, I, I struggled technically, like my technical skills, the things I struggle with most are of course bodies and hands, um, but I think the thing that I struggle more so with is the feeling of inadequacy. 
Um, I often feel like I'm not good enough or that I'm not improving fast enough compared to other people, which is probably like the worst thing you can do. And I hate that I feel this way. And I honestly try to tell other people to not feel this way. Um, but it's something that I really, really struggle with. So, um, yeah, that's something I'm also trying to improve on myself though. Um, another question is what made you decide to start posting videos on YouTube? Um, I'd always watched like speed paints and, um, especially Miss Carrie J. She's a huge reason why I'm a YouTuber today. Um, but I've always watched them. And one day I was just like, you know, I have a camera, I have a laptop, I can totally do this. Um, and I was actually, I just come home from the hospital and I was still on like a week leave of work so i wasn't working so i was kind of stir crazy so i was so bored i just decided to make a video and throw it up on youtube and i <laughs> it kind of started my whole channel because um i realized how fun it was and i just kept posting videos and posting more videos and then before i know it i have like this this youtube channel um but yeah so if anyone is out there you know trying to decide if they should post videos on youtube uh definitely go for it because i started just making silly videos with copyrighted music in them and here i am uh another question uh what are your music interests so i love like almost all kinds of music. Um, I can pretty much find anything from any genre that I'm interested in. So I'm just going to name off a few of my favorite bands. Um, my favorite band of all time is 21 Pilots. That is also tied for first place with Paramore. Those are my two top favorite bands of all time. Um, I've also been super into First Aid Kit recently. Love that band. Curly is another good one. Um, let's see. I love Lord. I love Marina and the Diamonds. I love the Limousines. Um, the Smiths are really good. Uh, Two Door Cinema Club. Um, I love Flyleaf. I know that's kind of out there, but Flyleaf is like one of those nostalgic bands that I like. I still rock to. Um, yeah, I know I'm forgetting a lot, but honestly, I just love a lot of everything. Oh, of Monsters and Men too. That is another fave. Um, okay, let's see. Um, another question is, why do you choose to draw realistic and not anime slash manga? Is there a reason? Um, first of all, I would definitely not say that my style is realistic at all. Um, I actually used to draw in an anime slash manga style. And if you uh, watch my video about my old sketchbooks, you will see that. Um, I was hugely influenced by anime and manga when I was younger, um, especially in like middle school. Um, and then just w as I progressed through art, I just decided I didn't want to do anime anymore. Um, and I just wanted to kind of incorporate other things. Like I was following a very strict anime, I, I don't know, style, I guess. Like I thought, okay, I want to draw anime, so I'm going to draw anime. Um, and then just as I got older and I progressed in art, I decided, you know, I don't have to stick with like one thing. I don't have to draw anime. I don't have to draw super kawaii desu anime style. Um, so I just started like incorporating other things from other artists that I admired because I watched like a lot of artists that were not solely anime artists. Um, and I just like took my biggest influences and started incorporating them into my art and my style just naturally evolved into what it is now. And like I said, I don't think it's realistic and people ask me all the time what my style is called and I hate that question so much because I don't think my art style has a name. I don't think anyone's art style has like a name. My art style is just an accumulation of all the things that I've learned and all the mistakes that I make in my art and everyone's art style is totally unique to them even like realism artists make decisions in their art that makes their style unique to only them so yeah that kind of went on a tangent there I think I'm going to make an updated art style video just because I get that question so much and it's just like Ah, plus I don't think you should put a lot of focus into your art style either. Like I think if you try too hard to find an art style, you really hold yourself back from improving. But anyway, I'm going on a huge tangent now. So let is go on to the next question. Uh, this question is, what is your best childhood memory? Um, 
I actually really like this question and I also kind of want to turn this into its own video but um I was offered a wish from the Make-A-Wish Foundation and it honestly is like one of my best memories of all time um I of course wanted to go to Disney World because you know who doesn't and if someone comes up to you and is like if you could go anywhere in the world where would you go I'm gonna be like I want to go to Disney World um and they totally hooked me up like they knew that I wanted to be an artist so they got me um like a private tour of the Disney Animation Studios I got to talk to one of their cartoonists um I got to have like a private drawing session with one of them it was absolutely amazing um they also gave me front of the line passes so literally i just flashed this little card that says i was from make a wish and i got to the front of the line to all of the rides which was a lifesaver because with my health um being in florida in the middle of summer like even with the front of the line passes and having all of this accessibility, I still had to be wheeled out in a wheelchair most days just because it was so hard on my health. Um, but they really went above and beyond. And honestly, I kind of get choked up thinking about it. But it it was just it was one of the best things that's ever happened to me, honestly. Um, so next question. Do you like Hamilton or any other musical? Um, I unfortunately have not been able to see Hamilton. I've heard amazing things. Um, I do plan on seeing it, hopefully very soon. Um, but I do love musicals. I, I mean, yeah, I love musicals. Um, it's really hard for me to pick a favorite. Um, I love, ugh, I don't even know. I saw The Lion King, like Broadway show, um, when it came to Las Vegas, and that was amazing. That's definitely one of my favorites. Um, it's yeah, I, I I like musicals. Um, I like musical movies too. Like any movie that has musical aspects to it, just oh, it's my jam. Uh, one of my favorites is Sweeney Todd. I know, kind of cliche, but I I love Sweeney Todd. I love Tim Burton, and um. I'm forgetting his name. Oh my gosh, the composer. The composer works with Tim Burton a lot. Danny Elfman. Ha 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 ha. Danny Elfman, yes. One of my favorite, favorite duos. Um, but yeah. Um, ba, 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 ba. What is another question? Let's see. Sorry, guys. I'm scrolling. Um, did you go to art school or are you a self-taught artist? Um. I like to say for the most part, I'm self-taught. I did not go to art school. I would have loved to, but art school is expensive and I don't have money. So, huh. um, I did take some art classes in high school and I took some graphic design classes in high school. So I'm not 100% a self-taught artist because I do have classes, but they were high school classes and they're not like accredited or anything. But I am really glad that I took those classes. Um, my art teacher was horrible. I've considered making a video about her because she's just kind of meh. Um, but my graphic design teacher was incredible. And I am going to make a video about him specifically because he was such an influence on me when I was in high school. Um, he taught graphic design. So in class, our projects were geared toward graphic design, like working for a client, um, stuff like making uh, like menus and business cards and flyers and stuff like that. Um, but he also ran something called the Digital Painting Club. And that is just, it was, <laughs> it was such a cool club. Um, he had a huge background in art, uh, digital art and character design. So he would often use the club to teach us things about you know, digital painting and character design and all this really interesting stuff that was just right up my alley. And he taught me so much with that class. Like, just in terms of being an artist, he's actually the one who encouraged me to pursue traditional art because at the time I was focusing really on digital art because I thought that's what I needed to do to be successful in the art industry. Um, and I was kind of talking to him I was like yeah well I love watercolors and I love all this stuff but I'm really struggling with digital which is a shame because that's what I want to focus on and he was like why like why are you stressing so much about digital art when you can just do what you want to do 
Um, and that was so influential to me. And he also had a huge amount of Copics in his room uh, that he, I think they belonged to the school. Yeah, they were the school's Copics and he let us use them for projects. Um, and of course, I used them in the Digital Painting Club as well. Um, but he was the one who introduced me to Copic markers. And uh, like when I started my YouTube channel, that's pretty much solely what I used before I branched out into other media. But um, yeah, he's where I learned how to use Copics. And he taught me a lot about using Copics as well um, because I was totally lost. <laughs> um, but yeah. So we're pretty much wrapping up this video. Um, I just wanted to say thank you again to all of you guys for making this year amazing. Like, honestly, I know I've been kind of MIA, especially the past few weeks or so, but I am so grateful to you guys for just being, being here and being a community and just always being a welcoming place that I can go to for encouragement and inspiration and you guys are just awesome and I really appreciate you guys and I love you guys and I hope you are having a good New Year's Eve. I believe it's New Year's Eve when this video is going out. Uh, forgive me if it's not um, but I hope your guys' year was good. I hope you have lots of goals for 2018. Um, I really, really hope that your new year is filled with love and happiness and magic and all of those good things. And I'm just really happy that we can celebrate together. And yeah, I'm just really happy. And I cannot wait to see what 2018 holds for us. Like I said, I'm extremely hopeful that this year is going to be great. Um, I have lots of plans, lots of goals. Um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be super awesome. So thank you guys. Uh, how many times can I say thank you in this video? Let's count. Uh, take a shot. Don't take a shot. Uh, take a shot of apple juice or something. I know you guys are underage. Um, but yeah, I love you guys so much. Happy new year. And I will, <laughs> I'll see you all next year. Ha ha ha. I am so funny.